So this work is joined with uh, Emmanuel Filio, my advisor, and Shibashish Gua. Shibashish is just there. And uh, I will just introduce uh, the, this Parikotomata model first. So this model basically extends the, the definition of NFA in the sense that, that now uh, transitions are la labeled by uh, vectors, vectors of integers. And a run is then associated to a value, which corresponds to the member-wise sum of uh, the visited weights along this run. And to check if a run is accepted or not, consists to check whether this value, its value, belongs to a semilinear set, and this semilinear set is given here by a Pressburger formula. So a parikotomaton automaton is then represented as an automaton, a labeling, and a formula. So this formula is defined uh, as follow. It's basically uh, the first order with uh, the integer structure, let's say, with the order. A formula can be universal or existential if if there is only one kind of uh, quantifier, re respectively. And I will also mention formula. So basically, it's the same definition, but here I took non-equality instead of uh, the order. I mean, in most of my presentation, I will consider existential Pressburger formula because this is the most considered in, in the literature. And finally, there is this notion of 2NS. So these 2NS can be seen, basically, as a partition of the states. Some states read the input forward, and some other states read it backwards. And the automaton does not like go beyond the world thanks to those uh, begin and end markers. So it's well known that in, uh, in, in the case of uh, NFA, this 2NS does not increase the expressive power of the model, but in the case of Parikotomata, so with this Pressburger acceptance, this is not the case. Uh, so let me start with the one way. So it, it pops up from the literature two main properties. The first uh, one is the fact that Parikotomata extends strictly uh, the class of NFA. And as you can see here, there is an automaton which counts the number of A of the input word in the first dimension and counts the number of B in the second one. At the end of the computation, uh, the formula, thanks to the formula, it can check whether those two counters are distinct. Well, obviously, this uh, language there is not regular, and uh, so that's, that's somehow a proof of uh, this uh, uh, extension. On the other hand, NFA, uh, NPA are uh, famous because they are still decidable for non-emptiness problem. This has been shown in the initial paper, which is MSO uh, with uh, cardinality. And then it has been shown to be P-space complete, uh, sorry, NP complete for uh, existential Pressburger formula as acceptance condition, and even log space complete uh, if in addition this formula is weak. And when you think about it, uh, I, I, I didn't mention that, but the weights are supposed to be encoded in binary in this model. And, and though these results, these n log space results, uh, seems very surprising because if you, you you can be out of memory by taking only only one weight on transition. That's a quite interesting result actually. But uh, anyway, let's start with uh, some motivating example. Let's say in the whole presentation, I will consider the equivalence of functional transducer, and I will show you how. Uh, Parikotomata can help us to solve those problems. So here is the statement. I can rewrite it as an emptiness problem where we are looking for words uh, such that those two uh, function, total function, realized by uh, transducer, uh, return a distinct word. In fact, 
Those two words, distinct if and only if, they resist some position where there is a mismatch. So to highlight this a little bit more, I really show that this, uh, quantify this position like so. I mean, this is not uh, so crazy. So here is my statement, and I want to then ask this equivalence question for this instance, where the first transducer rewrote all, uh, rewrites all A's with a bullet, and the second one does the exact same uh, things, but with uh, B. So obviously those two transducers are not equivalent, and here is a counterexample. But I want to show you uh, this uh, in detail. So if I uh, want to prove that this word belongs to this state, I have to find this i. So if I take i equal 1, where I will not get any mismatch. If I take i equal 2, I have to compare those two bullets. So this is not a mismatch, indeed. But you can see that they have not been produced at the same moment of the computation. And this is because our transducers are not letter to letter. We said that those transducers are not, uh, don't, don't have synchronized output. So anyway, if I take i equal 3, then I will obtain my mismatch. And then that shows that those two transducers are not equivalent in, in detail. And when you think about it, our transducer, in fact, just count in unary either the number of a, either the number of b, I mean, modulo those markers, of course. But then we will have a mismatch if and only if we don't have the same number of A than B in the word, in the input word. And this is not regular. So uh, in the end, Paris Automata seems to have the good ingredient to uh, solve automatically those equivalence uh, problems. And indeed, given two transducers, I can uh, design an algorithm which constructs in polynomial time a one-way Parik automaton such that you will have an empty language if and only if those two transducers uh, are equivalent. So that gives us those co and p uh, membership, but we can do even better thanks to the pattern logic. The pattern logic is a it's a formalism in which we can express some uh, structural properties for automata with output, and in particular for transducer. So here is the definition. Please focus on the red box. So, so such a formula starts with some list of quantifiers, and those quantifiers said uh, that there exists uh, some paths which start from some state to another one, read a word u, and output uh, a word v. And at the end, we have a constraint, which is a Boolean combination of those predicates. I guess the predicates are quite obvious. I should say that this one encodes the uh, word prefix order. So I give you maybe a little bit of time to digest this definition. And you can try to think how uh, to encode the equivalence in this uh, formalism. So does someone have any Hope? No? OK. In fact, this equivalence problem reduces to the functionality of those disjoint union of our two transducers. And this can be expressed with the, with the following formula, which, which said that there exist two passes. Both are accepting. They, are, they read the same input word, but they output a distinct uh, word. Okay? So in fact, I, I didn't uh, show, show you all the, the predicates to make it simpler, but uh, uh, that, that's not relevant for the rest of the, 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 this presentation. This is just to let you know. So then we obtain those NLOG space membership from the uh, NP completeness of the model checking for transducer against a fixed pattern le formula. So then that's close the one-way part. And for two-way, I mean, I just consider the same problem. And the, let's say, naive approach is just to uh, use this same trick of uh, mismatching. 
uh, but with two-way Paris automata. And in fact, those two NFs with Paris automata permit to encode the product. And this is not so good because then uh, the, the, the non emptiness problem belongs to uh, the undecidability. And to, sh to, to, to give you the, um, the intuition of this proof, I want to uh, present an automaton which has three blocks of A's and can check with, thanks to those acceptance conditions, that the size of the last one is the product of the size of, uh, of the two first. So here it is. At the beginning, the automaton just doesn't do anything, just reach those first diamond. And here is uh, a non-deterministic choice. Either he pass uh, over and never go back, either he accumulates the length of the first block uh, by reading, reading it backwards. And then here we have an invariant which said that C, the accumulator C will, have, will be the length of the current block times the number of visits uh, of these uh, states, of these gadgets. So then the second block is treated in the same way, and the last one is just like, we just get those, uh, the, the, the final length. And thanks to those acceptance conditions, we can force v, uh, V1 to be 1, so then C1 will be equal to N, the length of the first block, V2 equals C1, so N as well, and C2 equal N times the second block, M. So then C2 equals those products, and I mean, we are basically done with, with this. Okay? Not, not that this product can be uh, arbitrarily, I mean, can be fixed, but longer by just adding some of those uh, gadgets. So this is not the good way to go. But in fact, we can uh, use more those functional uh, hypothesis and be more restrictive and consider this subclass called bounded visit two-way parichotomata. So a parichotomaton, a two-way parichotomaton is a bounded visit if the number of time each position is visited only depends on the automaton itself. And in fact, that will be bounded by the number of states. Okay? So this is the case for transducer because if you have a loop in the computation, either it don't output anything, and then it's not relevant, either it outputs something, but then that contradicts the functionality. In fact, those bounded visits uh, provide a decidable non-emptiness, and this goes by getting rid of those two windness. I mean, this is a very famous uh, construction from our, our Kraft-Ullman, and I want just to uh, give you the, 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 the intuition. So here is some uh, input words, and this is a two-way run, where, I mean, this is really the, trans uh, the, the transition, and those two states are equal. And basically, this construction consists to guess those blocks uh, of uh, transition for each symbol, and check that uh, when we pass from one to another, that we in indeed have the equality uh, from one block to another. This guess is possible because we uh, uh, are bounded visit, and then the number of transition there is just uh, the number of state at most. Also, there is, um, there is two uh, statements. If we have a de deterministic automaton, then by definition, there is only one uh, accepting run. And then there will be one sequence of block uh, that we can, constru uh, that we can uh, construct in order to accept. And then we will get uh, an unambiguous paric automata. Ah, yes. Here we are speaking about paric automata. So we have to uh, take care of those uh, labeling, but in fact, since the, the, the sum is uh, commutative, this is, uh, this is not a, a, a restriction. So this is a small uh, recap of uh, what I have. 
So on top of this hierarchy, we have those undecidable class for non-emptiness, the two-way. We just show this uh, direction from bounded visit to one-way pericotomaton, and also this direction from two-way to unambiguous. Th thanks to those exponential time construction from D'Artois, Fournier, Jecker, and uh, Lot, we, we have those in exponential time. Okay? So then this construction provides us those x-time connection, let's say. And then that provides us this co-next time uh, membership. But in fact, so we indeed have an exponential blow up there. But it's only due to the size of those blocks. And the size of the block depends on the number of states. And by using some traditional, let's say, techniques, we can compute this result on the fly and then obtain those uh, p-space results and it's even p-space complete and that's provide us those p-space uh, membership. In fact, I didn't precise it, but let's say I bet that uh, those two bounds are uh, tight, even for uh, total function. And I mean, all those work on uh, Paris automata and two-way cannot be handled by this uh, pattern logic. And this is actually a work that we, we would like to, to do and we are looking for. It's to extend this pattern logic for two-way uh, automata. So then I only speak about those non-emptiness problems, but we can also like, think about universality. So in the initial paper, this uh, universality has been proved uh, undecidable for one-way parik automaton. Uh, and basically, this is due to the fact that the complementary of uh, such automaton is not, uh, this class is not close under complementary. Uh, however, for unambiguous parik automaton, since there is only one accepting uh, run, the, this is decidable for uh, universality, and this is also close under uh, complement. The intuition uh, is that the complement of a language, I mean, a word is rejected either if the underlying automaton rejected it or even if the formula rejected it. But this is only true if there is one accepting uh, run. And we provide the tight complexity for uh, the universality thanks to uh, has uh, results. But in fact, you can uh, tell me that, well, okay, this complexity is when you have one block of existential quantifiers, and uh, anyway, it, it will be bounded by the, uh, those two x time uh, upper bound due to those uh, copper construction which remove uh, quantifier of uh, Pressburger formulas, and indeed this is correct. So that's why we also looked on those small generalization which uh, takes. So this is uh, two-way parik automaton, but which take uh, as a acceptance condition a formula, a Pressburger formula, but with a, a fixed number of quantifier alternations. So I have to insist that here, this is not one variable, this is a, a tuple, uh, a block of existential quantifier, then universal, and so on. And depending on the, if it's uh, even on num number, we will have uh, the last one. And this the satisfiability of those formula is, uh, has been shown to be sigma i minus 1 complete for those weak exponential uh, hierarchy. So that's not uh, super common. If you know those polynomial time hierarchy, so which run between p time and p space, there is, let's say, a weak exp time hierarchy which range between x time and x space. So this is a uh, result I, I just shown you. We have an undecidable problems uh, for both non-emptiness and universality for, for two-way uh, parik automata. Then it's p-space for deterministic and bounded visits. This can be translated to NPA, this to uh, unambiguous. And all those results uh, can be extended somehow with uh, this sigma i uh, acceptance condition with uh, those complexity. So that's it for me. If you have any question, thanks you.
So we just uh, to come back to the undecidable uh, dispute or two-way uh, non-deterministic tariff automata. Yeah. If you limit the number of variables of the test-border formula, is it possible to come back to some uh, decidable theories with two ways? I mean, for instance, for example, three variables. For five. I need to. So if you have just one variable, is it decidable? Yeah, that at least break this proof because in this proof I need at least to yeah that, that way you said uh, three now I understand but because this one is irrelevant but I really need indeed to like check how many time I take those products so in the literature it's called a weak product because we have some iteration of uh, this value, but we don't know exactly how many. And with uh, this second variable, we can check at the end how many indeed. And yeah, you might be, you might have a good intuition. Uh, it's really possible that it's defined, uh, decidable for one uh, uh, variable. This is really possible. I don't have a proof, a precise proof in mind, but uh, I, this is not sure. The three, I'm pretty sure, yes. But there are some results with two variables. Some, somehow, sometimes it's, it's still possible. Th there are some results about Petri, Nets, or VAS with two variables, and it's not super clear. Yet. And so I, I don't know. So for two way uh, uh, automata, the constraint of bounded visit seems to be playing a very critical role, right? Very, very important role. I mean, your results are subject to that. Now, you know, to determine whether uh, a given Parikh automata has that is going to be hard. Are there any special? So, first, uh, this bound deficit con constraint is uh, sufficient, but we don't know if it's necessary. And to answer to your question, uh, checking those bounded visitness. It's p time, it's p time, and we want actually those extensions to the pattern logic should also allow us to express those kind of uh, property because this is a structural property. So it's exactly the way we want to extend this logic in order to check structural property, but for two-way automata with output, with output word, but also with output uh, value integer, for instance. This is also a possible extension <laughs> of the pattern logic. Quite natural, I have to say, but we didn't really look into it because with three, so there are some patterns which exist uh, in p-time with trees, but they are not a lot. Uh, and then that's motivated a little bit less this, uh, this extension. But yeah, I mean, it's completely interesting to also extend it in that way. We, we are actually looking for an extension for visibly pushed on uh, transducer, which is, I mean, nested words, so that's not trees. But <laughs> so yes, indeed. Another question? Thanks.